Today is December 2nd, and this is the first Wednesday of Advent. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. The Apostle Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will also, he will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. During our National Day of Thanksgiving, we are encouraged to search for and articulate what we are thankful for. We are, of course, thankful for the riches and freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. And we continue our expressions of thanks for our communities, our health, the medical help that is available to us, our technology, our work, our family and friends. The Apostle Paul begins his letter to the church in Corinth by recognizing that there are more than the tangibles for which we as Christians are thankful. God has blessed us with the gift of his Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus comes into our midst as a visible promise of God to those who have faith in him as the Christ. The words and actions of Jesus strengthen us. They strengthen our faith. They strengthen our moral resolve to live as the people of God in a world that dismisses or distorts God's intentions for God's creation. God redeems us through Jesus Christ. And we look back to what Holy Scripture tells us about Jesus. He is born for us in Bethlehem. He dies for us on a cross outside the walls of Jerusalem. And he dies, he rises from the dead on the third day. He ascends into heaven with the promise that he will come again. One of the goals of this letter to the church is to remind the church that Jesus is coming again. Christians look back on what Jesus has done to save us. And we also look to his coming again. We want to be ready for his coming and as Paul makes plain in his letter to this troubled congregation, in response to the good news of Jesus, we encourage the Holy Spirit through God's word to change our thinking and actions to reflect God's will and intentions, will and intention for our lives and for the way in which we live as a community of faith and bear witness in the world. In verse 7. Paul says this, So that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those spiritual gifts include the community of faith, the different roles we all play in building up the community, the gift of God's Word, and the liturgy and hymns we use to worship the Lord together. In these Wednesdays in Lent, excuse me, in these Wednesdays in Advent, we give thanks for the spiritual gift of hymns. 
Hymns are scripture lessons written in po poetic prose and set to music. Hymns stay with us. They form our imaginations, change our hearts, and strengthen our faith. Today's hymn is Savior of the Nations Come. The tune is easy to sing and it is certainly memorable. I appreciate what the hymnal companion to Evangelical Lutheran worship says about this hymn. The text scans the whole story by taking us to the manger while assuming the victory of the cross and resurrection. The result is to make come. The result is to make come refer to Advent's paradox. Christ first coming, second coming, and coming to us here and now. In this first week of Advent, we look forward to Jesus coming again. Our faith and hope are based on what Jesus has done and promised. And we look forward to that time when we no longer live by faith, but see God face to face. Until that time, we hold on to God's promises in Christ. We make use of God's spiritual gifts that are given to us. We listen to and are shaped by the hymns God gifts us with. And as the last verse says, praise we sing to Christ the Lord, Virgin Son, Incarnate Word. To the Holy Trinity praise we sing eternally. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be our honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God.
rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.